So this is the end. This is this doesn't make any sense. Two, three. So I skip three blocks. Just dig five like this in. Then I go to the other side and dig five in. But there's no way to dig that way, so I won't. So I go one, two, three, and then the fourth one. I dig five in, and I can see all the blocks around here. And when I do it from the other side, and I should be in the same exact positions, um, my block will, my tunnel will end three blocks past that one that I'm looking at right now. So I'll see two, three blocks on the other side. I won't see the block in between, but I see the block on this side. And I see all these blocks. And I just, I just think it's, yeah, you're going to miss some stuff, but very rarely. You're going to get 95 to 98% of the stuff. And this is, instead of making these tunnels, I can just make these quick little side paths like that. And for the amount of blocks that I break, see, now I have... I see coal over there, so I'm going to dig to the coal, collect the coal, or diamonds, or whatever's over here. Then anytime I have to dig all the way out here, I'll put a torch at the end of here, make sure this is all lit up. And this is also good for getting experience. This is a, the poor man's way of getting experience. Because I'm about to hit 20 again. And I don't know where that zombie is, but he's probably going to hit me soon. I hear you. I'm not going to worry about you. So I'll put a torch down there. So then I just go one, two, three, fourth one, and. And collect the blocks. One, two, three. I do not get all the blocks at the end because you see that one's hanging there, but you know, it's just cobblestone, so it's not a big deal. One, two, three, four. And I try and keep it consistent so when I'm working on the tunnel next to this, I am exactly lined up at the end. See now, there is coal here that I missed. Yip de doo. But if you use coal blocks as a working block, and I plan on doing that for the Moria build somehow. Um, I need a lot of this and eventually if I get the silk touch I'll just silk touch all this um, and wait till I get the fortune 3 because fortune 3 is possibly the best pick ever One, oh. and when I make the tunnel out obviously you saw me skip this Unless I'm directly mining it and it's in my way. I uh, will skip over it and collect it on my way back. Okay. So let's see. One and always fill in the holes. One, one, two, three. So I can't really do anything there or there. So one, two, three, four, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And I work on my way back to the beginning. And it doesn't seem like it's... I'm getting anything extra. But when you do this and you run into diamonds, it's like, oh yeah, it is worth it. <laughs> After all. kind of opening like opening up cheap Christmas gifts you're not expecting much but there's this anticipation of hitting diamond that I really kind of like I don't know part of the reason why I like this game is because it's really relaxing to me to just grinding and doing this type of stuff I really enjoy doing it uh, when I'm stressed out at work and I come home 
and I'm just mining like this, um, I really get to relax fairly well. So it's something I do enjoy a lot. Get some redstone for applications I'm never going to use because I'm not that huge a redstone fan. I do use it because you do need it for stuff, but I'm not like creating my own redstone projects. But I do know it well enough to kind of know it, how to. Um, kind of know how to create stuff. See, these are diamonds that I... Got. And sometimes when you see two like that, it could be uh, diamond, it could be redstone, it could be any other ores. Always, when you got two next to each other, on top of each other like that, most likely one diagonal in either direction you'll have two more so i'm guessing there's two more diamonds either there or over there so there they are just a trick for you to know if you had just to see the two like that most likely are there are two more right there that's why people like to dig around the diamond blocks because even though they're not seen and it's set up in that particular order there's the other two. It's a little tip from somebody who's probably spent weeks of their lives doing what I'm doing right now. I know people hate watching it, but it's like one of my favorite things to do in this freaking game. And it's... I don't know. Oops. One, two, three, four. I, I just like the anticipation of hitting a, you know, some diamonds or whatever. So even though I came down here and I killed myself and I had two diamonds and a sword and three diamonds and a pickaxe, I've been down here, you know, just goofing around for an hour and a half or whatever, not really mining four diamonds specifically, but I've already got 14 diamonds. I think I got six back at the chest and eight on me, which is... three times more than I had in the first this is week five so the first 16 hours of playing this game even though obviously searching for diamonds wasn't my thing one two three in the first few episodes so I was thinking you know I do AFK a lot in this game. What? How should I do Minecraft on AFK? So one thing I was thinking was I do have a bunch of music. I was just thinking of recording, you know, the mobs falling. Maybe doing, taking a two-hour re recording session and turn, you know, speeding up the episode till twenty minutes and uh, putting music over it. Or maybe t actually doing a pre-planned story somehow. But my stories have all backfired. You know, I, I think to myself before the episodes begin, what am I going to talk about? Oh, well, let's. I was going to talk about living in Florida and all the different things that happened in living in Florida. And I can think of a few points. And I'm like, yeah, that's... It's a great thing to talk about living in Florida and how people look down on Florida and it's kind of like the laughing stock of the country and why it should be and why it shouldn't be. And it takes me like 10 or 15 minutes to talk about it. And then I have another hour and 45 minutes to go over stuff. So I have to either learn how to flush out my stories uh, completely. I don't know make three movies out of one children's book <laughs> instead of making three movies out of three adult books I, don't know. I need to 
work on my storytelling. Because I have experienced a lot of things in my life because of just being on this planet longer than most people. And uh, a lot of my advice can help people. I know one thing, I got in trouble when I was in high school for um, drugs and I was arrested and all that stuff. And I went to, as part of, not as an agreement to get a lesser sentence or anything, but as something to help me get out of jail because I was jailed, because I was bad. Um, I went to, with the people that were helping me, uh, two different high schools talking about the negativities of drug addiction, how easy it is to get addicted when you think you're just trying something once and and all that. And I always thought to myself, this is a tangent story, by the way. Um, if I could just help one person, it would be worth it. So even though the information I'm giving here isn't the you know, necessary information, but I think it's, you know, if it helps somebody, good, I'm, I'm happy, because I've always kind of thought of myself as a teacher type person, even though I don't teach, but I like teaching people how to do stuff, I like guiding people in the right direction and how they should live their lives and not worry about st stuff that is minimal, like, um, the high school stuff. I mean, high school, everything is ultra exaggerated in the importance, but as soon as you get out of high school, within two days, uh, everything that has happened is just gone. It doesn't matter. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, most of the people you'll forget about but at the time when you're living it it's like the end of the world oh my god this person thinks I'm ugly so as long as you think you're you're something and that's all that matters it never matters what other people think of you it only matters what you think of you So, and I noticed when I was making the videos, I was always saying, well, this is bad content, and this isn't how I want it to go, and I'm still kind of doing it now, because it's something I'm working on, but if I want people to enjoy the videos, I'm not going to have them enjoy the videos if I'm complaining about how bad the video is, because they're going to go, well, yeah, this video does suck, so why am I watching this? So I'm like convincing people my video is bad before I, you know make giving them the opinions of my video before they make their own opinions. It's those things I gotta, you know, I keep an eye out for and how to improve. And, um, I don't know, I, I'm learning. I always try and be a little bit better today than I was yesterday. I gotta learn to be a little bit happier too. So, silverfish, come here. It's another thing you get when you're working down in the in extreme hills is you gotta watch out for the silverfish. It's not the end of the world. Is it? Oh, I knew there was more back here. Okay. Thank you. Gonna get that. That's important. Hate to get it with just a normal pickaxe. One, two, three. So you basically see how this goes. That's a good way to do a lot of cover a big area quickly with the mining. And when I get back to the end, I'm gonna throw everything in chests. I'm not chests into um, the ovens and I'm going to call it an episode some I may call it before I get there and because if I run into another cave system which is pretty good I'm not going to explore the cave system 
um, in this week's episodes. Because uh, sometimes you can, it takes three to four hours of real time to explore a big cave system. And usually doing this, uh, you will run into one of those cave systems. I kind of did, but it wasn't, it didn't sprawl out as far as it could have. So, every... Whoops, what am I doing? One, two, three. Every so often I will come down here and make a new tunnel and cut across like this and get the ores as I need them. And I on the other side of this tunnel that I made that is 250 blocks long, the other side... One, two, three, four will be 250 blocks long also so I'm actually really going like a thousand long thousand block long tunnel so I guess my tunnels you could call them a mile long if, if each block is supposed to be three feet one or two yes I saw that I'm not that stupid so don't worry I'll go back and get that I'm not like Etho. I don't destroy my diamonds. At least on purpose. And I'm almost back at the levels. So. I could. Uh, make some really good stuff. Uh, not armor wise but I could make another sword a pickaxe and um, maybe a regular axe I don't know if diamond shovels are really worthy because I cut in there these two blocks I put a port torch in there just to make sure it's lit up because I don't want to have to deal with mobs while I'm running around down here. I mean, obviously, when I'm exploring a cave, I've got to deal with mobs. But later, if I ever come back down here, I don't want to. See, sometimes I think... Don't think this is the best way because, as you saw, I just passed some iron, which I would have passed up normally because I didn't see it from where I was. And that iron you would have found if you're doing the two, uh, you know, digging a tunnel then doing one, three more things over. So I would have passed up this iron. But the, that's one of the things where I tell you, you are going to pass up some stuff. But overall, you're getting 99% of it. One, two, three, four. So I don't know. What do you think? This Do you think this is the best way to per block... Um, mind to find diamonds there's there's a better way there probably is two three and it does take a while it, it does take a good 15 20 minutes oh, this is where that cave was over here so i'm probably going to punch into a cave It does take 15, 20 minutes uh, if you don't find a cave to do one of these. Maybe a little bit longer. It is not the most exciting stuff to do in the world. But it is necessary if you want to, um, you know, make, a, you know, be help, 
wealthy in Minecraft. And being wealthy is a good thing. Especially in America. Nobody likes having to try and figure out how they're going to eat their next meal. That guy so sounds like he could be on top of me, too. And there's the spiders again. Last time I heard spiders over here, too, I was... I almost want to go find that. I can't pick you up, so what do we drop? We don't want the bow granite. <laughs> I don't hate granite as much as Ethel. Believe me. Yeah, that sounds like it's on top of me. Yeah, see, there's the water that I'm hearing. I just want to figure out if that's a spider spawner because unless the spider has stayed spawned this whole time. Is there more than one spider now? I can't tell. So the spider spawner is good to have unlimited wool and um, spider eyes. Good food. Good eats. They're probably the hardest spawner to make because spiders act differently and are a different size than all the other mobs. But it's definitely worth making it. That's why I was going to go and see if I could find the spider spawner in that uh, abandoned mine shaft, which I don't remember where I saw it now. I should go back to one of the first videos and do it. Let's get this guy. Huh. One, two, three, four. Let's go one more. I hear more. One, two, three, four. Is that right? Yeah. I heard more silver spish. Spish. <laughs> more silver spish. Spish. I did it again. Fish back there. More silver spish. I was also thinking um, in the front of the entrance or down in the main cave area of Moria, more my version of Moria, I gotta figure out what to call it. So I don't really want it to be called Moria because I don't want it to be compared to Moria because Moria is so awesome uh, that it would, you know, it's hard to recreate that. And I'm not gonna be trying to recreate it. Let's get rid of that. Oh, let's get rid of that. Um, so I had to come up with a name for the mines. I was working on last night, um, maybe putting the KMA's corner into the wall somehow, but that wasn't working out too well. But I do have at least the supports for the cave and what the cave walls and doorways are going to be like. And it's basically going to be a dark area on half slabs with strange lighting. Lots of this. Let's get rid of you. Um, because I do want to have it pretty much designed ready to go so when I'm building it I don't have to spend the time just designing it because I'll spend an hour designing a a 
a, a pillar. And that's, and I would rush it if I was doing that on camera. So I'm just going to a creative world and creating the stuff. And I guess I'll have both of the worlds open and just recreate it over on here while I record this. There we are. So let me go like this. We can throw that. I didn't even get a stack, huh? I didn't even, did I not get anything? I'm going to have to do some chest stuff. Uh, I will put you there. Crappy blocks there. So I'm happy because I got a bunch of diamonds now. 24, 22 diamonds. That is pretty awesome. We'll take 24 diamonds anytime. So let's... What are we doing? I'm going to make a uh, chest for crap and a chest for good. And of course the crappy chest has to be bigger than the good chest. So let's throw all the goods in here. I really only have one. Four. So I'm going to have to get rid of these two things to start working that way. But as you see, uh, we got one, two, three, four, five. That's where it would end. And that's the block in the middle. Then I'll go five that way. It'll be good. Let me just make sure. Oh, I'm still doing it, huh? Stop it. Um, yeah, I'm done. This is it. This is the end of the mining episode part, or mining week part one. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the way I mine. It's a little different, but it's good. I hope you enjoyed my death. That was not funny. And uh, I'm sorry that I had killed chocolate cream off camera. Forgive me for that. But until next week, have a good day. This is Kay. Enjoy. I'm going to go eat my dinner. You should do that too. Bye-bye.